Hello, we're here with Karen Gadd from Oxford Creativity. Welcome, Karen. Thank you, Peter. You're an expert in TRIZ, and it would be great to hear some examples of where TRIZ has been used in practice. Well, that's what I've been doing for 20 years, is using it in practice, and we're TRIZ problem solvers, not academic approach at all. And in 20 years, we've never seen it fail. Um, some of the more startling examples, there was a company, there's a company, Ceres Power, um, an Imperial College rollout, and they do fuel cells, and they called us up and said, can you come in and help us solve this problem we're completely stuck on? And I said, yes, and it was the day before Good Friday. And they said, can you come on Monday? I said, it's a bank holiday. They said, it's the only time we can get everyone together. So we went off over this Easter bank holiday and we worked for a few days with their team. And the, at the end, they not only solved the problem, they actually found ways forward. Their share price doubled in the next few months. And it was a very typical TRIZ workshop. We arrived to face a group of disgruntled, cynical people with their arms folded saying, what is this TRIZ stuff? And at the end, they were so excited because what we do is we add TRIZ to their experience and their expertise and all their knowledge. And then they solve their own problems. And I have never seen TRIZ fail people like that. So I always say, add TRIZ to whatever good things you've got, your cleverness, your knowledge, and it will, it will help you solve anything. That's wonderful. And can you give us an, uh, another example, perhaps from a different sector? Well, we work in all kinds of areas, um, about 80% engineering and technical. We work with a lot of um, medical device companies doing very tiny devices for diabetes, um, from idea generation through to patents. Um, we do a lot with, with companies like BA Systems. We've worked with them for 20, 20 years. And we've done problems from redesign of an aircraft wing or some tiny little component to, um, there was one problem that the government asked them to take on aircraft maintenance as well as aircraft manufacture. And when we started to look at the problem, the government were also changing the law so that pilots could sue if there was a fault on the aircraft. So suddenly the whole regulatory environment was unsuitable. It would be like taking on the asbestos risks as, as Lloyd's did. It would have been catastrophic if they hadn't spotted it. And so we worked through and with TRIZ we produced a simple diagram that said this is what's wrong with the regulatory system, there's something harmful and something insufficient. They showed it to the Secretary of State and the law got changed in 10 weeks. And they said what TRIZ had given them in that instance was clarity. People could understand what the problem was and see how to solve it. And that's so much... TRIZ success comes from that kind of clarity. Thank you very much. Your company, Oxford Creativity, has done some wonderful cartoons of the principles of invention. Can you tell us a bit about those and whether people can access these? Absolutely. Um, they're on our website, you go through our cartoon gallery, you contact us. We have certain conditions like you don't remove our copyright from the cartoon, which an awful lot of people do. Um, and um, we're very happy to help people because we, we work with Clive Goddard, this cartoonist, we've worked with him for 10 years. And we say that if the cartoon's explaining TRIZ, we've probably commissioned them, we've commissioned hundreds of them. If they make you laugh, they're probably a Clive original because we buy his from Fiverr Eye and places like that. And they're all about making TRIZ clear at a glance, which as you know, is what TRIZ is about, understanding things really quickly. The cartoons really help with that, especially for an international market, which we work in. Thank you. You talked about a couple of technical examples of the use of TRIZ. Can TRIZ be used on non-technical problems? I get asked this everywhere, that and TRIZ for software. Um, last week I was working at a conference and they said, can you give us a very general example? And I said, well, I'm working with our local cathedral to try and get young people into the church. And I've been explaining to them why TRIZ is so much better than brainstorming and puts in all the steps in between what you want and, and the idea you come up with. And so we're doing workshops on that. The Pope has announced that he's going to use brainstorming to get young people into the church. And so I've suggested to our local cathedral that they contact the Pope and show him a better way of doing it. We also work, we've worked with the local county council who wanted to increase 
their staff and reduce their costs. They wanted more staff and less, and less overhead. And we worked with their legal and, and general department on that and we succeeded so much that it was in the Financial Times that, that Bucks County Council had actually managed to double their legal department and reduce their cost to zero. And when we did TRIZ with them, they said, this is like an epiphany. That's great. You've been involved with TRIZ for quite a long time. How long does it actually take to learn TRIZ? TRIZ is a bit like learning chess. <laughs> you can spend forever getting better at it, but you've just got to start doing it. And so we, we, we say, take a day to learn it to start with and then start doing it. We teach it in five days and then another five days, so, which is quite swift in TRIZ terms, but you've just got to keep doing it and you've got to have enough um, examples and books and things to hyperlink your learning. So, but just problem solve, just keep trying it and try it on absolutely anything. How to improve your local pub, how to solve something really technical, how to follow a recipe better when you're cooking something. I use TRIZ on absolutely everything. Karen, thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Peter.